Holy cow. Amber, story chasing. Uh, Eastern North Carolina. Looks like, uh, you know, over near the, uh, what was it? Dare County. I believe it was Dare County. Kind of over near the Outer Banks. Uh, she's in a park. She goes to bed at night. A trailer park, or a camping park, whatever. She goes to bed at night. And then she gets these pains all over. Up, you know, shoulder, lower, round, whatever. A lot of pains. And that got worse and worse. And she took some meds. She has, you know, various medications she takes for pain. I'm not going to get into it, okay? I'll let her explain it to you. The, med the meds didn't seem to work. And so she, she got really scared. And she called 911. And they came out. And after a bunch of tests in the ambulance and stuff, uh, they determined that what she had was not particularly serious. I'll just say that. And she's okay. She's just fine. Everything's fine. But she said she had had the second dose of Pfizer a couple days before this particular event. And was just wondering if it was connected to that. Uh, they, the, the ambulance guy said no, they had not heard of people having this kind of symptom as a kind of a um, side effect from the second dose of the vaccine. Uh, and um, they said they hadn't heard of you know, that at all. And uh, so anyway, so she is doing fine. Uh, perhaps <laughs> she should change her diet a little bit. Maybe certain types of foods may not be the best. You know, I don't know. I don't know. That's it. You watch it. We're not going to get into exactly what was wrong with her, but uh, she's happily feeling much better now. Story chasing Amber, and uh, do watch it because uh, it's a good, one of the, there's a very 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 good point in this video, and the one is when you are at a camping park, you may not know your exact address, okay? And it's a good idea that when you check in. To a park get the exact address whatever the you know they will probably you know the so-and-so camping park whatever the address what street it's on what road it's on and then get your lot number and write that down on a piece of paper and keep that somewhere handy because if you need to call 911 you're gonna have to give them that you know they're gonna want to know your the be as best as you know at your exact address you know, I remember when uh, a couple years ago I was in front of a CVS store and a man, tr an older man tripped and fell and hit his head and was laying there kind of semi-conscious. And I had my cell phone with me and I did the right thing. I, you know, I made sure this guy was out of the street and a couple people were gathering and I was, everyone's going, does anyone have a cell phone? And I, yeah, I was like, yeah, me, I am, you know, nobody else has a cell phone but me, right? I called 911 and... Uh, they wanted the exact address. And I say the CVS at the so-and-so shopping center. And they said, what is the exact address? That's not the exact address. This actually, the guy that was on the 911 call was not particularly friendly. <laughs> I said, well, it's the so-and-so shopping center. I, I, you know, we, uh, we had to ask, somebody actually had to run into the CVS and ask him. It was, you know, 93210 so-and-so Boulevard. You know, sweet, you know, whichever suite it was. You know, suite number one. 14 or whatever. We actually had to give them that address. But anyway, so anyway, good good video here from Amber. I'm glad she's feeling better. Uh, I'm glad it wasn't serious, but it is it's some uh, scary stuff there if you're in your vehicle and you have the need and you have the need to call 911. Kuru Paul. Oh, 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 wait, wait. I always do that. We do the uh, we stop the Let's get him with his eyes open. There we go. This is a good channel. Two expats, two expats in Mexico, and a whole lot of interesting stuff about uh, what to do if you're in Mexico. How to fill out all the forms if you don't know Spanish. How to, all the tax things, all the you know immigration stuff. A lot of cool stuff. A lot of questions you get once you you know once you move to Mexico and say I'm going to live in Mexico for a while. There's a whole lot of questions that come up, and it's a great channel for that. And this one is. Uh, bank fraud stuff. A lot of crazy stuff going on with the banks and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, somebody wants you to deposit some money and this and that or whatever. Uh, check it out. Good video here from uh, two expats in Mexico. All right, and then it brings me to this video. Eric the goat guy there, he's up in the Seattle area. He and his girlfriend get this check in the mail.
with it, they're like it comes in a priority letter, you know, like it's important, you know, and uh, it's for a lot of money, multiple thousands of dollars. It looks like a real check, and it's basically a survey. You're supposed to fill out some kind of survey. I, I don't know, and and they're going to pay you like thousands of dollars for it. And it comes in a big fancy envelope, and it's you know he really uh, wonders if it's a real you know is this is this a real thing? Is this a real chat? Is this re somebody's really going to pay us thousands of dollars to answer a survey? And uh, thankfully, all the uh, folks, thankfully all the folks come to Eric's rescue there and basically uh, tell them that. Um, Tell, tell them that, yeah, um, yeah, that um, it's it's probably a, some sort of a scam. Yeah, yeah, it's a scam. They want you. I don't know. I don't know all the things. I see. I see a lot of videos on stuff like this. You deposit the money, and then the check after like two weeks, the check goes bad or something. Uh, no, what what is it? <laughs> yeah, and, and then all of a sudden the money gets sucked out of your account and you're left broke and. Yeah. I don't know. You know what? I don't know. There's just one scam that I've heard. One scam that I have heard where you get a big check, someone says deposit the check, and then, uh, you know, you know, whatever. And then they, they say, oh, we sent you too much money. Can you send us half the check back? So it's like a $5,000 check. You send $2,500 back to the company, to whoever sent it to you. Sorry, but keep the other $2,500 for your, for your uh, you know, troubles. And then, like, two weeks later, the check eventually, you know, gets yanked out of your bank account because it was a bad check. It bounces. That's what I was, term I was looking for. And now you're out the $2,500. Well, now you're out, you're out the $2,500, right? Uh, and then a whole bunch of fees. I don't, I don't know. But they've gotten $2,500 of your money. Get it? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> That's just, uh, someone, no one's going to send you a big check for a survey, right? Anyway, hopefully uh, Eric the goat guy and his girlfriend uh, did not deposit that check. Oh, it was nice to see a nice video from Demonic Abyss. A nice live chat last night for 46 minutes about all the fun and stuff. You know, he, we have this thing at the bo what's called the bottom of YouTube, and it was very fun uh, years ago. And uh, it's amazing how many people are still interested in it, but we had a nice little chat there with uh, Demonic Abyss there. Very good stuff on his channel. Uh, and all the, me all the memories, <laughs> the memories. And I also was on Rosie's chat last night. A lot of chats last night. Uh, and uh, it was, it was fun. Rosie still says she's planning, Rosie O'Kelly says she's still planning to come to North Carolina sometime this summer to visit some relatives. And we're going to, uh, hopefully I'd like to meet her. It'd be very, that would be a lot of fun. So we do have quite a few uh, nomads coming through this area sometime this summer. And, uh, you know, some of them will stop and some of them won't. <laughs> some of them will they'll get close to Morganton, North Carolina, and they'll go, oh, no. Uh, line screw one, uh, Andrew, needs a generator. He's got his old generator that busted, and I don't know. I guess he was thinking about buying a Honda generator. This really, this video isn't really about not buying a Honda generator. I guess he thought that would be better clickbait. Anyway, there he is up there in uh, the wilds of uh, somewhere in British Columbia there. And uh, he unboxes and he pays, use, pays his own money. He's not getting a... Uh, He's not getting compensated for this in any sponsorship way for this portable inverter generator from a company called Radley. It's like a box. It's like a, I don't know. It's made by some company over there on the other side of the Pacific. And anyway, but you know, whatever. And he, he tests it out. He just tests it out. It's not a fancy schmancy generator, but he gives it very good, very good reviews. And uh, he's got a guarantee on it from the local shop that he bought it from. So he is going to keep us up to date as to whether it continues to run well or not. And all the, and all the stuff about setting up this is, I think it's a gasoline generator anyway. So, uh, you know, but there, nothing wrong with a Honda generator. He's just, uh, he, you know, this way he, he said, and it is true. Pandemic, it's harder to find stuff. You know, you're looking for a generator, go into a store, it's hard to find a particular model or whatever. This particular model was much cheaper than a Honda generator and it has a three year warranty and uh, so far it worked pretty good. He got it from Home Hardware Canada. 
So anyway, but he said that it's hard when you go into stores these days, you're looking for appliancey type things like a generator. Uh, you have to settle for what they have. It's awful hard to find the brand or the type you want because they are, um, I don't know, there's just, there's shortages. There's shortages. Doesn't that look nice? Doesn't that look nice? Girl in the woods. Oh, 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 don't stick your foot in the fire. That's, that's not good. Anyway, dog. Look at that, isn't that nice? A beautiful green canopy, a nice level cleaned campground, some stocked wood over there, a uh, nice little stump to sit on, a beautiful collie dog, a beautiful fire, and a, look at that, look at that tent. I mean, it's got, it's got candles on the table, it's got lighting, it's got a nice platform there. Isn't that nice? Don't build a cabin, do this instead. And you will have a just about about as glamorous a camping experience as possible. Girl in the woods. I don't know. This was an, a very odd video there from RV Rebel Girl. She is a camped out um, in a piece of land. Now I, I, I again. This is again. Please don't get mad at me, Carolyn. That's her name, RV Rebel Girl. Don't get mad at me if you get this wrong, but. I believe her son owns like a radio station or something in the Chicago area. And you can see there's a broadcast tower uh, and she's parked near it. I think that's where she's parked. Okay, I don't know. Maybe she's somewhere else. She might be somewhere else. But she's parked on this lot, this plot of land that's got a gate with a lock on it. So that you would think that would be where a broadcast tower is, right? For a radio station because they'll lock the land so no one comes in. Anyway, so she is there you know, having a nice time on her, you know, in her RV and her trail, her trailer and her um, truck there, her van, her van, she has a van that pulls her trailer. And all of a sudden this, this car comes in with these two people in it and they actually clock, they have a gizmo and they break the lock and they drive in. And RV Rebel Girl's like yelling at him. Well, what are you doing here? Get out of here. This is private land. Don't know you're trespassing. And she calls the cops. She calls the cops and the people turn and then they kind of block the exit and then the cops come and then they said, I don't know, something settles it. It just seemed weird. Like, why would these people break the lock and want to come on this little plot of land near where a broadcast tower is? I don't know. Very weird video. Uh, it's a nice video, but it's weird at the end. Trespassers, vandals, I don't know what they wanted. It looked like this middle-aged couple in a, you know, SUV-ish type car. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, what were they there? What were they there for? I don't know. Now, the broadcast tower has a big fence around it, so it wasn't like they were going to get over. What were they going to do? I don't know. 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 But it was a very, it just left me with a lot of questions at the end. Maybe she'll answer those in a future video. I don't know. All right, that ought to do it for our, uh, for our little review segment for, uh, for Thursday morning, the 27th of May, 2020. Thank you so much for watching. I look. I think I'm looking better in black, right? I don't know. I, I saw my, I did a video yesterday wearing a dark t-shirt and I thought, I think I look much more <laughs> in black. I want to thank Kevin. Kevin there in uh, Victoria, British Columbia sent me this wonderful black t-shirt. Kenny Rogers Roasters. Yeah. Are there any more of those still around? I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, Kenny passed away a couple of years ago, right? Anyway. Uh, in popular culture. Yeah. Kenny Rogers Roasters is the center of an episode on Seinfeld, the chicken roaster. <laughs> Kramer can't sleep due to a neon sign shining through his window, so he hangs a banner in an effort to drive it out of business. The brand shuts down at the end of the episode when Jerry unintentionally sabotages it with a drenched rat hat. Uh, anyway, I don't know. I don't know. According to this Wikipedia thing, uh, the, the company did enter Chapter 11 bankruptcy in March 1998. It was bought by another company. And uh, apparently most of the, Ameri all the American locations were shut down. Uh, yeah, uh, most of them were shut down. Anyway, some other company bought the f international rights and you can still find Kenny Ro Rogers. Uh, yeah, okay, the last Kenny Rogers Roasters no operating in North America was in the Ontario Mills Mall in Ontario, California, which closed on December 31st, 2020, 2011. So no more Kenny Rogers Roasters in America. However, they, you can still find them in places like uh, the, the Malaysia. But there are actually Kenny Rogers Roasters in Malaysia. So if you want to go to Malaysia, 
<laughs> you might. And someone ought to do that. Is there, are, we do have some. I've seen some nomads in Malaysia. Yeah, they ought to find the Kenny Rogers Roaster over there and uh, give us a mukbang food review of it. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. You have a wonderful rest of your Thursday vlog under.